Welcome back to Small Caps, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kerry Stevenson. Today, I've bought you Francis Hunt, but we're not going to call him Francis Hunt. We're calling, going to call him the, the market sniper. Why is he the market sniper? Well, he's a bit of a renegade trader. He's a technical analyst. He's founder of themarketsniper.com and the HVF method, which stands for the Hunt Volatility Funnel, which is his personal way of using the charts. And I love this, Francis, you said charts are the footprints in the sand. We'll get into that, ladies and gentlemen. But right now, I thought it was important to get Francis, the market sniper, I'm just going to call him the sniper, uh, onto the channel, because a lot of you out there in the community, you're concerned, you're worried, are we in recession? What are the charts telling us? What's going on? So, sniper, great to see you. Welcome to Small Caps. Kerry, absolutely. I love the introduction. I put on my tracker shirt, as you can see, as a true South African and hoping to encourage my outback Australian friends. Uh, great to be with you. Thanks for the invite. Well, uh, let's let's start with uh, charts of the footprints in the sand. Give me a little give our community a little bit of background of who you are and how you got into charting, because it is quite an interesting area. Not everybody understands it. And some people say eh, charting. It's not really a lot of people don't understand it. How did you get involved? Yes. Uh, well, uh, it actually was quite traditionally poo-pooed as the voodoo science, as you were saying. There is still that element out there, although less so today. Um, so, yes, follow a lot of people, particularly people that have suspicions about the, uh, the authenticity of government intent, always say, follow the money. Oh, yeah. And the equivalent when you're looking at investment strategies of following the money is, as you've very eloquently said, thank you, and you'd be very well researched on the, the sniper and all his catchphrases, is the footprints in the sand, as you quite uh, so eloquent, uh, uh, elegantly put. And uh, as someone who grew up in South Africa, the Bushmen of the Kalahari um, were unbelievable trackers. And I think you'll have similar with um, your indigenous population uh, in Australia as well. Following the footprints in the sand, you can tell whether it's an animal, what kind of animal, is it injured, is it running, is it walking. Uh, if you have the trained eye, uh, and countless narratives and bushfire stories in uh, RSA about the unbelievable insights uh, that the Bushman trackers and, and other uh, indigenous tribes could actually instill from uh, following the footprints in the sand, as we say. So in terms of one of my great catchphrases that I actually think holds great truth. So I'm an actively a truth seeker. I'm a, I'm a fervent, fervent truth okay. seeker. Um, it's not what they say, it's what they do. It's something that I often regularly repeat. So uh, there's often a little bit of misinterpretation, disinformation. I've, I've always found, this is long before this fake news era, this is a 30-year narrative it just seems to have come more under the highlight that there's an unbelievable amount of noise propaganda misinformation and anything can happen and insiders often have a vested interest in withholding information or delaying it all sorts of things so how do you get as quick and as efficiently as possible to the truth and that is following the money and how do you do that in investment world it is looking at the charts so that is the justification and uh, reason but if you just start looking at the charts to you it's just a squiggly line Line going up and down exactly. so you have to make reason of it okay. and there's a lot of unfortunately whenever you have a new industry there's a lot of people that sell uh shovels uh in who are not real gold panners and it becomes more about marketing so the eye candy aspects of moving average systems size, and all of that which are delayed mathematical formulas applied to pro, uh, price as if these smooth lagging lines would point you to some future direction um, uh, of large parts of technical analysis that frustrate me immensely because I was kickstarted into all the usual catch elements, uh, moving averages and all of that, that are largely not uh, predictive in any way. Uh, and remember, anything predictive it will be a probability. There's no guarantees. So we are, if we were to describe HVF method, is it's an on balance of probabilities, likely direction, where an asymmetric reward, either to the upside or the downside, to a much tighter risk, can potentially be achieved with a reasonably high probability. So if you're getting a six and a half uh, reward to one risk, and even if you only have, say, 35 or 40%, those should be taken every time mathematically. Um, so we talk about a probability of outcome, a pout score, and then what's the risk worth, is the juice worth the squeeze? 
how tight can you manage that risk? So we tend to have highly expansive moves because we chase volatility constriction events with subsequent explosions. And these are often then led with the fundamentals dovetailing. So everyone thinks it's technical analysis versus fundamental analysis, while Technic the technical analysis is actually the fundamental analysis. It's just looking at the other side of the same coin. Um, and it gives it to you before the news hits, or by the time the news hits, uh, the move has usually occurred and uh, the insiders have baked in most of the profit. But, but let me ask you this. Did you have to understand like mathematical? How did you get into, how did you get to understand that what you've just said, in other words, the profit has already been taken by the time, I guess, the retail market even sees what's going on and you're ahead of the game somewhat. Um, what background, what knowledge did you have to be able to set up your hunt volatility funnel? That's what I'm trying to get my head around because it's unique. It was an incredible exercise of 30 years of development. Um, and uh, it's also a, an inquiring belligerent South African mind with an engineering <laughs> father and a lot of reading and adding and being totally honest uh, about what was adding value and discarding and adding things uh, and disposing. And in actual fact, unfortunately, in technical analysis, there's a large amount of largely worthless tools that should be removed. Most people's charts are cluttered with all the wrong things, in my opinion. Price behavior is the gift. There are two things that are semi-predictive that could give you on balance of probabilities uh, indications, and those are patterns uh, and volume for one. And then how do you measure? So patterns and volume are incredibly contributive. Indicators, I've already said, mostly are not uh, useful unless they have volume data in them. Bollinger Bands is a rare exception because they also indicate volatility for people early in their journey when they need to have these things highlighted. So that's the big intestine that tightens and then expands again with the moving average in the middle. But generally moving averages are uh, a dead end for traders. Uh, this is going to come as a shock to everybody because 99% um, of anywhere you go uh, in technical analysis, you'll be taught. It's a bit like me saying uh, surgery should be done without scalpels. Um, it, it's, 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 it's almost uh, scandalous and some people will be going. So the, the things I say go against well-repeated, oft-repeated mantras um, in technical analysis. The minute you clear all those things that are not adding value, you now have a much cleaner slate right. uh, and a cleaner room to find the correct doors that should be opening. So sometimes you have to just remove, but people have security blanket type. Uh, uh, I don't know if you remember Lois in Charlie Brown. Absolutely, uh, where, love Charlie Brown. <laughs> so you try pull the blanket and you get this absolute reversion. This is because sufficiently repeated information is hammered into the forehead that they cannot do without it. Uh, and it becomes security blanket. So this took, took me into mental and psychology. I've gone to wow. the, the, one of the best trading psychologists, a guy called Rand Howell. There's so much unlearning that has to be done, uh, de-learning, right the way through to biology. Uh, for example, I've had two nights of about three and a half and four hours sleep. Um, you shouldn't be doing much big trading. Most of my big errors have occurred when biologically incorrect. The philosophy is actually that we, the brain is the epicenter and you're in the top of a prisoner, uh, prism uh, or a pyramid, should I say, and the brain detects down. Actually, if you've got bad biology, you, you were drunk last night or toxic or in any other way, um, you actually short circuit your usual processes. You have a, a ratty, uh, erratic cut to the chase energy. And every time when you journalize all my biggest losing days, I was either sick, ill, had a domestic row or some other elements where I did great damage. In fact, ne as never a hung over, were you sniper? Never hung over. <laughs> and I uh, no, wouldn't allow it to happen. Uh, you can see I pulled all that hair out for the times that I did trade uh, as a uh, hang, uh, hangover guy. But, you know, uh, as I should, by personality, uh, not have been allowed near a trading screen. So unlike most uh, gurus, I think I've made every possible mistake and I've repeated them 10 or 15 times. So, you know, I'm prone to emotion. Uh, give me a coffee and I run around like a, a crackhead rabbit. Um, all of these things. So I've got high metabolism, uh, uh, biology with sugar surges and whatever. I can, I can the tell absolute you that, worst. I can tell you've got high energy and I can tell you've got high uh, metabolism. But what I want to do is I want to make sure we don't run out of time here. So here's yeah. what I want to ask you. You have used the phrase quite often, 
hyper stagflation. People are talking a yes. lot at the moment about inflation. They're talking a lot about, some of them are talking about stagflation. Some of them are talking about recession, depression, et cetera. Your terminology, hyper stagflation. I want to know what does that mean? What are you seeing at the moment? Because there's a lot of fear out there. What is it? Absolutely. And it's a great question. And thank you for asking it, because uh, I truly believe it best encapsulates our current economic malay. Um, so the, the word hype has been added to a, a, a phrase that most people probably have some understanding, but I'll start again. So uh, stagflation is when you have exceeding, you, you have low growth, economic growth in true real terms. Um, and then you have stubbornly high inflation. And I'm actually going to probably uh, dovetail a second question that I think you may also were going to be asking because it gets answered in the same overall explanation. Um, we had, as an example, we had a Goldilocks period during Greenspan's economic era when we were globalizing and most of uh, the producer price uh, costs were reducing immensely because instead of making in America, we started to down out short, offshore to um, India, China, and various other much lower costs of production, where sometimes there were even questionable, uh, questionable, um, you know, children were even working in Absolutely. factories, crazy hours being paid a pittance. So this allowed an excess amount of money to be printed that was inflationary. Always, when you print money, inflation. Inflation is the proliferation of fiat. Let's get that straight. Many people think it's the, the bread and milk price going up. That's the last stage of the effects of inflation. Anytime you proliferate, it is inflationary, and central banks are net proliferators, and inflation is their game from inception, always. But when you have a countervailing force, it's almost like global warming and global dimming. I'm not going to go into the climate change no. <laughs> argument, but you Let's have leave countervailing that for another forces. day, Francis. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You have countervailing forces uh, where if you are creating so much money, but prices aren't going up because you're busy reducing your cost of uh, uh, manufacture substantially by opening up to this much larger workshop where there's a lot of lower income uh, workers desperate to uh, earn and to get a subsistence living. This has actually masked the amount of inflation. So where did the inflation go? If I said there was inflation, it went into asset prices. So you've had unbelievable stock market runs. You had the real estate runs. All this excess liquidity doesn't not push up the bread and uh, milk price yet. It pushes up assets because you still got this massive industrial farming complex that are keeping these other things down. Commodities are the last things that go up. The reason they refer to commodities, there's two things that need to be understood because they can be done on scale and commoditization means there's no longer super profits in entering that industry. Um, so it's the last thing where price changes because there's lots of farmers with very big tracts of lands that can all grow sheep. You can't just charge five times more for your sheep uh, for a lamb chop uh, because Joe Schmo's farm next door, as good an animal, grew up in the same climate, at the same bush. Um, so this is why commodities are the last things to move in inflation. What you had is asset price inflation through the, the property and all of this. So now, post the, that was your Goldilocks. Oh, everyone can get rich on their house uh, in stocks that go to much higher multiples because A, the earnings have gone up because they're making super normal profits because they've got lower costs of inputs and their prices are still not just too expensive because they're making super normal profits and everyone can afford to eat all this. Now we've reversed that globalization with this U Ukraine uh, Russia war scenario. So we are deglobalizing. Yeah. So now you are getting the inverse workshop effect where you have to re onshore things at much higher labor costs, et cetera, et cetera. So now that hidden inflation that then ran into assets needs to contract. So this is why we're seeing assets contracting, and I think they're going to go a lot smaller. Um, and these, what is happening is that uh, central banks also add excess volatility. Each successive event has got bigger. I will just share one chart which part, uh, highlights this point, which is part of answering this question, if I may. Yes. Um, and this will just show you a broadening structure, which I call a megaphone, and we have theory for that. But this is a simple chart on the nature of um, expansions. And you can see that these, this is showing you, what are you looking at? The Fed funds rate. This is showing you ever greater swings by crisis. This is a huge broadening event. This is what's happening. We are going into ever bigger crises 
uh, on each successive event. And this is central bank led. You can see, for example, 95 hiking cycle ends, then you go into a dip. And we're getting ever wilder by percentage moves in the Fed funds rates. And this has been one of the hugest uh, recent reinflation in um, rates by percentage change. And we called the end of the 40-year the bond market with a huge spill. COVID-19 was a massive event that saw, they literally shut down the worlds and killed most of the SMEs for the better part of two years. So yeah. that was the biggest demand destruction event. Remember, using our charting, we called oil to single digits. No one else was doing that. It hadn't wow. been in single digits in 30 years. We called the short of Carnival, which was a cruise line as well as Tullow, an oil company and planes, all American pipelines, which is pushing oil around. And I asked, why am I shorting a liner whose second biggest cost is distillates and oil um, in a series? And I just didn't say the answer will come. We trade the chart. And of course, the old people uh, getting sick on and trapped in boats in close proximity is a bad business if pandemics come around. I never got to the answer until it broke, but I knew it as soon as I saw it. Really? And we were short on the commodities. Our entire community was short. So you, you take the trade for following the charts. The chart is the truth. You get the full narrative later. Most of us are narrative driven. We always want to go, but why am I doing this? Yeah. Sometimes you go, the chart is right. I do it. I get the story later. Uh, because by the time you're trading the story, you are responding to news and invariably you are the bag holder for somebody else's exits who already had the news before you. So that's why charting is absolutely really, really important, especially now in what you're terming the hyper stagflation that we're going into. You're saying once the news is out, it's almost too late. Or it Correct. is. And and I didn't fully answer the stagflation. The inflation has gone up now because of the commodities. Yes. And that's going to be stubbornly high. And it's going to remain stubbornly high because inflation is a monster that you best kill small and they haven't done so. Haven't done and it. because they masked it for a long time, the monster's now a medium going on big size monster and it eats you. Uh, you don't get to kill him anymore. So we are going to exist in a much more stubbornly high. And at the same time, there's so many governmental faux pas that are occurring that are undermining supply chain, reducing flight supply chain, whether you're talking farmlands, incidents on fires on various food production, you can go right down much, many rabbit holes, I'll spare you today. But the point of the matter is supply is now under attack. So you're going to be retained at a stubbornly high inflation, which is a tax. Inflation makes billionaires who on borrowed money extremely rich because they own assets with that borrowed money while their debt is being devalued. So the inflation devalues debt. But everybody else, middle class and working class people um, who are generally a high percentage of consumer, it is an impoverishing tool. So it is the perfect precursor to a communism where you have a super class and you have a flattened out middle into a serfdom. Uh, and this is what everybody is why. And this is why I'm Mesonaic. And you mentioned that I can go into full speed mode and robotic and I'll try to avoid that. But I'm, I am almost the John the Baptist. I'm trying to save people from being suppressed into serfdom and saying, actually, there is a wealth creation opportunity here for you if you understand the playbook. But only so the smart is get it? it. So what is it, Sniper? What is the wealth creation right now? Because you've said in the past, money is just energy. And right now there's a lot of fear around and people are almost stuck. And you so just said it. You want to get people not to be in serfdom. I am so excited to hear what you're about to say. Yes. Well, uh, it's so passionate about it. We created a community for it. So, uh, people can go to the marketsniper.com and find out more, but let's give you the answer why that would be worth their time. So first of all, sometimes playing great defense is winning the championship. And there are more attack vectors around you. So the first thing is don't kill yourself. Don't fall into one of the holes, the staked traps. Um, in, in essence, there is almost like I say, we're like rats in a barn where they've decided to burn the barn down. You have to get out of where the burning barns are at the moment. Uh, and in essence, there is a, a, a reverse Goldilocks effect, which you asked uh, part of the question on in the hyperstagflation of asset price deflation. And I think it's going to be long 
larger than everybody realizes. So one of the ways a certain group of people can pick everything up on the cheap is everybody else is forced into becoming a forced seller. Um, nobody wants to uh, sell at the bottom, but if you have no other funds, because everything is contracting simultaneously, you have such an extremity of deflationary forces on hyper-valued assets. Everybody thinks it's the new normal that the S&P should be 25, 27 times PE. Well, actually, you have become high on a certain scope of living and you're only looking at your most recency bias of data. Um, you know, everyone in Bitcoin thinks uh, it's a buy and undervalued right now. It was released during the biggest reflationary period in 2010 on top of QE1, 2, and 3. Uh, it hasn't faced a macro contraction error in 12 years. 12 years is not even a freckle on an ant's backside when you look at 3,000, 4,000 years in the gold and silver market, which has always been the physical bridge of money and a great store of wealth in spite of paper pricing right now. I'm sure you'll take me uh, deeper in that later. So yeah. the whole point is don't don't get killed is part of getting rich, um, first of all, because those that survive and have held uh, their money and assets in fundamentally things that will bridge the old system. We are in a period where a new system has ponied up next to an old mule who's slowly dying. It's my impression that the custodians are attempting to finish off that old mule so that they take away the option. So we've been parallel running the central bank digital tokens, this uh, Bitcoin, I treat Bitcoin and crypto as almost an on-ramping strategy yes. for capturing the libertarians into a belief system that this is the new way and you're escaping government. Um, and once you've got the libertarians, everyone else follows uh, because they don't question. And this is unfortunately the madness of crowds. You have to get the lead steers to charge, the rest just follow. Um, and in essence, that's why they talk about herd immunity and various everything. That oh, is, yeah. We are still a crowd of humans. So the old system rails are falling. You've got your old iron horse chuka train that is getting uh, down. There's this brand new monorail that's coming, which I believe will, or my assessment, I don't like using the word uh, believe, but assessment is that that will be central bank digital tokens after the next crisis. I think we are being run into the final crisis that will lead to the introduction of the new system. And that's why I also get frustrated by the buy the bonds, uh, wear diamonds crowd. This is the worst time to be in debt ever. It's quite likely that it could be essentially uh, an asset class that goes but, to zero. But I'm, pensions going, are already I'm, bust. I'm going to inter interrupt you there because you said just a moment ago that uh, in these sorts of times, those with lots of debt because of inflation, um, the inflation eats away at the debt. But now you're saying that people shouldn't be in debt. I'm now confused. Uh, if yes. inflation is eating away at debt, shouldn't I be going out and getting $5 million of debt because the inflation will eat it away over time? Yes. So it's a very good question and people see the dichotomy in that. So first of all, there's two countervailing forces that are currently working on you. And this is what causes the inf uh, confusion. Essentially, you're a ping pong ball trapped between the bat and the, the table when you go... <laughs> the, where the bat, for example, is the force of inflation and the table is the contraction. Um, in other words, the great recession in assets, uh, contraction in asset values. So initially, the inflation narrative was the dominator. And it was you saw the oil rebound after the, the original trade, exactly as we predicted. So it said when you have a hyper capitulation and you overshoot to the downside, you get a geometrically equivalent um, move to the upside because suddenly all the, the, the you know the, the offshore drill wells came in. I think we went in. Don't, no, there was no more than four out in the sea at anyone uh, in the globe at the lows yeah. um, when there was hundreds uh, before. So what ends up happening is you get this lags. It's kind of like a traffic fast lane where you know you go fast and then they all back up and you have to jump on the brakes and then there's these lags. Then they start stretching out again and you start getting on the accelerator and then you have to brake again. So we had this huge surge and then only this was everyone was doing we were on an autobahn and everyone was doing 300 kilometers per hour on, on oil and then everyone did an emergency stop uh, and the oil capitulated to the uh, to the bottom so it's just a higher volatility lag and surge so to answer your question if you're a billionaire and you can borrow uh, through your corporation 
at ridiculously low rates from a banking uh, cartel member at two or three percent. Um, and these options are generally not available to retail operators like mm -hmm. you and me, especially people on credit cards that could go anywhere up to 30 percent if they're semi subprime. But most people at 16, you need an, a, a very high inflation rate to not actually be adding. So the Ursary uh, extraction levels that are available to most people, it's less uh, good to be debt. And debt is also an instrument of control over you, uh, unless you're prepared to go to bankruptcy courts and go with everything that goes with it if things go wrong. Uh, and then there's often repercussions for that. And I've noticed laws are changing in terms of giving you your full freedom back after your year or seven years or whatever. So th there's a lot of things that I'm observing. So debt is a control instrument over you. If you're super rich, and you have massive amounts of debt, it's a problem for the bank, not you. Okay. And if you and those are usually at very low amounts. So big corporates, instead of doing lots of small SME loans for 5,000 to a small Australian business operator who's running a mom and pop stand, they prefer to give tens of billions to mega corporates, uh, who then will also follow various agendas and again rabbit hole, rabbit hole. But they will get they will get a block of money at a far lower rate out. Now those people benefit immensely in an inflation environment if we're doing fifteen to twenty percent somewhere in terms of true inflation and stated inflation somewhere around eight, nine, or ten, um, because that money is absolutely devaluing and they've got a massive spread differential in negative real interest rates. So if they they can hold an asset and not get foreclosed on while the asset devalues into a chronic uh, dive. When they come back up out and they reflate again, they will be on a runaway tear because their debt will have been reduced immensely. More money will have been proliferated again um, and the asset will escalate uh, a bar. We don't tend to have that. So people saying, you know, it's super smart. Uh, I saw Doomberg was saying it's smart. You should max out on your credit card. The difference is you don't get that same buy uh, and R spread on the cost of your um, uh, debt. Yeah, that's true. You know, and in fact, Americans were adding and extending their mortgages. And in many instances, they were being uh, the rate on the entire mortgage was going up because they were refining. So they were often paying even, you know, they were going off a 3.5 on say they were paying 200,000. They wanted 50 grand out. They would pay 5% on the, the 250. So when you calculate how much that extra 50 grand is costing you because you're paying 5% more on the 2% uh, uh, more on the entire loan, it's incredibly expensive finance, actually. And they don't so it, it, unfortunately, there's a two tier system about who gets uh, special privileges to benefit. And I call it, that's why I say inflation is a billionaire enriching tool and a middle class and uh, working blue collar man uh, impoverishing tool. Uh, and it's a dangerous precursor to, um, as I say, a bit of a Bolshevik co communism. So I have a lot of macro views and political views, which dovetail to what I see charting as well. And they're all uh, fairly well uh, informed, in my opinion. And this is what we're going through. But the real question that you behind all of this, while we've done this is, well, what do you do? Don't get killed, first of all. Um, and actually, if they are pushing you digital, it's my uh, personal opinion, and this is not a technical opinion now, this is from what's going on, that banks are likely to go into failure. The, the everyday retail banking part of the system is likely Why to be all gone. Why? Money is uh, debt. So the money is borrowed into existence, Kerry. So the first, if, if I'm starting a new uh, financial system and you and I are the, the banking cartel uh, and I am the president and you are the central bank head, we borrow into existence 10 million Francis's or uh, token X uh, yeah. and everybody, uh, we create an asset and then we distribute it according to, you know, how useful our citizens are. He's a doctor. He's this. This is how hard he works. That's a high value activity. That's not. And that's a political decision. Um, and then we have a liability. But because ursary interest is associated, and this is why, as I say, Islam uh, considers ursary a sin. Uh, the only time Jesus was violent was whipping the money lingers in the shul. And even the Jewish faith has a shemitah, which is a cyclical culling of all debt that has yet to be paid over a time frame. When you have an ursary system, it is automatically setting you on a rails of eventual failure. Because wow. what ends up happening by human nature is you have to borrow more money. If we created 10 million and they were all with a contract of 10%, and this was all given out to people, they actually, we already require, if all loans were to be paid back at the end of the year, uh, 11 million back. 
but yeah. there's only 10 million notes in circulation or tokens in a bank. So we have to keep expanding the monetary supply so that money can be earned. And that is new debt, which also has new interest implicated. So we are in an expansionary universe, which is why central banks um, know that they are always running an inflationary policy long term because they have to proliferate further supply. And then eventually interest rates will trend down uh, due to natural abuse because debt uh, is building. We've just had an accelerated, orchestrated series of events that has spiked that, that is bringing our system very aggressively to an end. So a banking system is actually a distribution of debt as well as money. And the, the distributors are uh, essentially largely insolvent if we measure them truly and properly. Most of the asset classes are hyperinflated. You've had this in Australia. You know what a Sydney okay. home costs, an everyday one. Um, and in actual fact, the rate of growth is ridiculous. And these things could be resized down. And that would uh, mean that the assets the banks hold are they all technically insolvent. Those could be folded in and a direct relationship with a, with a crypto-esque wallet and a CBDC could be instituted. And that can be your new monorail. Government can tax you in real time, um, can punish you for social score sins, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that could be slightly dystopian. I hope to be proven wrong on some of these things, but a lot of it's already taking place in China. So they will forego a system and say, we've got this new, new system. It's always hope and change in politics. It's always hope build back change. better. It, uh, it's always new personality, new broom sweeps clean. Like the British are about to get this with Boris Johnson. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, the, the story is um, new new manager, same as the old manager, new leader, same as the old leader. In truth, they're going to be orchestrating the same game, but they're going to say this is changes and this is how it'll work. It'll be faster, quicker. These are all the benefits for you. You don't need to do, you know, and you don't need to instructions. Think. Don't, don't exactly. think about it. Just exactly. trust the government. And, 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 exactly. and so let me just step back a moment because a moment ago you said that banks could become insolvent. Now here in Australia, a lot of our banks have got exposure to the property market and yeah. we do have, uh, there's, there's a need for more housing. We've got a, a, a real lack of housing in Australia. Sounds crazy, but true. And I'm not sure how, how much you follow the Australian market, but I would have thought that with the bank's exposure to, to some of this debt and property debt, that they, they will be not able like they don't want the property market to crash because it's not in their best interests so yes the banks certainly wouldn't um if you are if if the top of the pyramid has decided that we are doing a seismic change from the old system into okay. a whole new system reset which the world economic forum seems very clean on and uh, many of the, its junior leaders are throughout the world at the moment yeah. so there is a synchronized leper colony everybody here there is no arbitrage for sound money where do you go for sound money every nation state has got open indebted we don't have we are many people say that you know one day there'll be a new world order the new world order is here mm -hmm. every major government has pursued uh, as chasing a highly indebted system had very similar uh, pandemic responses you have a globalized synchronized government response everyone is a leper in the leper colony you may as well if you're clean and healthy kiss the first leper as you attend because <laughs> you you are almost uh, not part of the family until you've kissed the leper uh, and become the, one of them yourself. So there is no sound money nation state. Now, many people will be sitting here, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, uh, we can address that separately. Um, but if every nation state is hyper in, indebted uh, and is reaching the end of a debt proliferation scheme. We do not have real monetary policy, which brings us to a future question I know you will be coming on to. Um, and this is Dan uh, Demartini. So I've had to chase lots of philosophies to explain systemic things, mental, biological things for trading, uh, so many areas of amazing in interest. And one of my favorites is Dr. Demartini. He oh, talks yes. about how when you suppress in one area, you you can't help but there being in the system an elevation somewhere else. So, um, you, uh, you know, he uses quite interesting examples about, um, you know, uh, this is a bit uh, crazy, but uh, how if, 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 you, if you are um, knocking yourself in one area, you will be over aggressively supremacist in another area. You know, you think you're smarter than everybody else. You just haven't achieved near as much as your talent or something like that. So wherever there is, the whole element is getting to that point of balance 
uh, and love, uh, as he describes it. And in systems and in families, even, you know, he even tells crazy, interesting stories. But, you know, if, if, there, if, if there's not a natural sexuality in the partners, it starts to manifest in the kid doing gyrating in front of the TV. It, it gets into very interesting topics, but it applies to our system financially in that we have a valuation of debt that is being supported by the printing of money. Mm -hmm. The simple law of economics is if there is a lot of something, it ceases to have high value. It becomes a commoditized item. Think of pink pairs of Crocs. You're not going to spend a thousand Australian dollars on something like that. It's mass made in a factory. It's knocked out. It's a commodity. Um, but if everyone has a Bugatti Veyron, they're also not going to sell for a million euros, two million euros, et cetera. In other words, they found a way to commoditize them and build right. zillions of them. Um, so scarcity is uh, part of value uh, in our system. Now, debt is abundantly supplied. And if you consider that America only gets revenue is in to pay 52% of its expenditure, that means half its GDP uh, is virtually being added in new debt, never mind the old debt coming due that has to be rolled. Um, you have an absolute wow. universe expansion. So how can this have value? And we've said at the end of cycle, which we assess us to be now, and you have all the people talking about reset, and it's time for a new system, and this new, more equitable society, and this green new deal, watermelon communism is on its way, in our opinion, and all sorts of things going on in Europe in the name of carbon neutraldom, including the Dutch farmers. I can see the political, I can see the economic, and I can see the charts. And every single one of them is telling me that this is the big one where you will be put in a situation. How do you move a lot of inertia-based people off an old system? You eventually got to kill it. You introduce the new system, get the new tech and the new kids and early adopters on, which can be the Bitcoin on-ramp and the That's crypto on-ramp. And yep. then you kill the horse with everyone else. They have to jump. But now you have enough of the population that can help them over, that can show granny how to open a, a wallet, et cetera, et cetera. And this wow. is the, and you create ever escalating, note that megaphone I showed you, the central banks have introduced volatility, not stability. Huh because of the expansionary policies. So we are preparing for the big one. The Titanic has already hit the iceberg, but the band is still playing. And people are talking about minutia, like should the deck chairs be lying horizontally or on their side facing the sun that way. Well, and me. I'm the Manic Street preacher shouting, lifeboats, lifeboats, yes. get to the I bloody lifeboats. I was just lifeboat. about to say, market sniper, what is the lifeboat? Instead of uh, organizing the deck chairs, where's the lifeboat? What is the lifeboat? What do I need? What do we all need? I've got a big community out there. Our community is yes. very, very smart, but they're confused, yes. I think, at the moment. So where's the lifeboat? What do we need to and, do? And confusion is part of the strategy as well. Mm -hmm. So clarity is the game. Look through clarity. the smoke. But, and most of and your suspicions are right. So part of what I was going to finish is when you hypervalue debt, something else that is a canary in the gold mine that would be indicating that that is hypervalued debt is being suppressed. Okay. So when you overvalue something, it's at the expense of something else in a system of balance. This is Demartini. Uh, and it absolutely applies its natural geometry in our HVF method. I see this universally. Trading is a microcosm of life. This teaches me about everything. Going on our program, you will become a better person, a smarter, worldly, wise person. So what is being suppressed? You know it and you've been smelling it because you're in the right space and you have the smarts and you are instinctually aware. Physical gold and silver uh, gold, I think it was 1.1% that it expands uh, annually, that it inflates at. Yeah. And we haven't had, if you listen to the likes of Rick Rule, who we were interviewed on our channel, and I know you've spoken to, I'm pretty sure, um, we haven't had a major gold find in absolute ages. Uh, I'm wearing my uh, South African uh, Outback Australian uh, shirt for you, especially, um, <laughs> but... We are, we are contracting gold finders, Australia and South Africa. South Africa used to be the biggest. You yes. took us out yes. uh, and now you're contracting. And actually it's China. And what actually is China doing? It's they are hard. importing gold and they're the biggest finder. And what does Kissinger and the likes of the other people say? So I'm referring to our three brands. The Reset Sniper is what's World Economic Forum and Kissinger saying. 
the world is pivoting east. That means away from the west to the east. I look at how the gold on the paper market trades in the west and the US open, the open through to the close. It nearly always gets, you split the chart on the US session and it, it's a capitulating chart. If you only traded gold on the US session, you would have lost about 60% over 30 years. But the actual gold price is up. And if you buy on the Eastern session, it's parabolically up. So they are actually that, physically that, buying. That, Who that, do that Sorry to interrupt you, but that plays into what we call the, the, the currency wars, if you like, because gold, uh, I guess the Americans are looking at it going, well, gold hasn't really done anything for me. Although if you look back, if you take a step back, actually gold has done what it should always do, which is hold its value. It's not an investment. Great. It's an insurance policy, ladies and gentlemen. And it's interesting that um, Market Sniper is talking about gold and silver actually being money. So my question to you is, is that the lifeboat? Is it cash plus yes. gold and, sil uh, and silver? Is that the lifeboat that we need to be looking at? Because right now, no one's looking, no one cares. They care about cash to a certain extent, but actually everybody is, I guess, uh, drug fueled with uh, higher asset prices and the wealth effect with property, et cetera, uh, even classic cars, no one cares about gold, silver, and they all think that cash is trash. And you're saying, Absolutely. move yeah. your mind, get on the lifeboat. Absolutely. And you've absolutely nailed it. And going back to the system, if you think debt, which is over proliferated, is being hypervalued, and you live closer to Japan than any of us, where they are doing yield curve control, and mm -hmm. we called on a squeezy, squeezy Japanese, one of our HVF method breaks <laughs> at 107, a macro move. We said, forget your crypto, FX is the new crypto you're going to run to 136, which is a target already now made. Uh, and then there'll be further overperformance later. And we're looking at a structure now for 138 on a smaller time frame of yield curve control, which is a fancy sounding tool to sound sophisticated. They're very good with language. All it means is print the currency even more and buy the assets you're trying to hold up in value so the yields stay low. That is what they're doing. They've got a bunch of pensioners that believe their Ponzi scheme kept putting all widows and everyone buying the Japanese debt. They can't let it fall. Otherwise, and they have an inverted demographic with elderly people and they're having you know 0 0.91 uh, kids every couple. They're not even replacing one parent. So you have that uh, it's right on your doorstep. If you believe that Japanese debt is hopelessly overvalued or debt anywhere else in the world, you the, the corresponding, imagine... If, because I see natural balance, imagine the degree to which um, the insurance policy, gold and silver, precious metals is hyper undervalued by paper price. So to many listening to this, they'll think I'm a dystopian uh, doomsday porn preacher. Uh, what is actually a biggest gift and opportunity is the paper Ponzi price that they are suppressing. The great gift that you're not seeing is being able to buy precious metals at the Eastern window that the West is suppressing for the Eastern transfer of the real money, the golden rule who holds the gold. Um, and it is pivoting chronically. And I think when people find out the true extent of fraud, counterparty risk, and all other measures that will all be exposed in a far bigger crash than ever before, you will be inordinately wealthy if you have taken this. So remember, wealth is a, a relative construct. It doesn't matter if house prices all lose a zero. If you've got it in gold and gold has gone up 100x, you're buying the entire neighborhood uh, super cheap. We've had instances when a gold ounce in the, uh, almost, uh, I think, three gold ounces bought you the average UK home. It has gone so far the other Everybody. way. I've charted gold in GBP and average UK property when I was doing it. I showed people that we've had ever broadening escalations in a financialization of everything world. Property. The reason why I'm saying go buy property is a financial asset because they've applied financial engineering to it. On principle, physically, it is good, but the pricing has got too high because of debt and le leverage. So your purchase should come post the great contraction. And then you are owning a physical worthwhile thing that can generate yield and everything else. Um, so there will be real estate investors. I would say take your, take your high water mark for love or money because even though you guys largely skipped through the, uh, the, the GFC mm -hmm. far better than most other nations, you have had one of the biggest extended cycles. 
Um, and uh, you'll be able to get out at the top and you will be buying back in a forced seller environment. Don't forget on the reset, I've got the three circles in the brand talking out of my reset hat. You have BlackRock, Blackstone and Vanguard buying up a large swathes. They want to be the global landlords. You have yeah. global retail online buyer Amazon. You are already in a one world corporate corporatocracy system. You have governments that have no semblance of individual decision making. They've all got over indebted. They've all had the same pandemic responses broadly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You are already in a, a one world system. They pushing you digital. You must do the opposite. Go physical. Ah. However, don't buy leveraged property at a ridiculous price. Buy the suppressed price gold and silver and hold ideally it on you don't put it in bank vaults don't put it in etfs or paper gold um hold as much of it on you that will transform you need a bridging asset from the old train that is breaking into the hyper monorail that you hold on you literally they must have to send a man with a gun and know that you have it and where you keep it to take it off you um and that is going to be very hard for them to do on a big scale but they can and track that means you carry wealth over most people are going to get stripped in this process. But if you own physical gold and silver, they'll know that you have it. They track everything, don't they? Like they track everything these days. Uh, absolutely. Um, and what, what we do uh, in terms of our community and our plan is we arbitrage across different nation states. There will still be cracks for us cockroaches to hide in in this <laughs> nuclear holocaust. It is very difficult to perfectly synchronize everything. For example, I have four South African directors I've personally met that are in Panama, that are in an ex-US air base for Howard that are vaulting for our community. They take no political people, the, the peps or economically connected people. They are they were engineers, highly qualified. They are reset minded or like us. Um, they have their own bullion in there. It's on an airfield. They have the zombie apocalypse plan, which involves boats, uh, planes and fall to where they would take the gold. They have three layers of security. This is what I've done. You should have at home. And that's in a different, that's in Central America. This is actually going to be harshest carry on the West. People forget the Russians had the Bol Bolshevik revolution and they were scarred as characters. You know, they're known as sullen and don't smile and don't show your emotion nation. This is actually PTSD of an entire nation. Right. The West has had the big easy. It's our turn. Ask the Eastern Europeans. Ask anyone from who's come from a communist nation. They aren't buying it. It's American college kids that are all buying the socialism and the communism and the fairness for all. It's the ones that have never experienced this. And I'm afraid that it's, the West is going to get the harshest downdraft because we had the easiest life so far in the system. So you need to also look beyond your existing state. And people go, oh, that's hectic. Kids are in the school here. I like my own home. Your inertia will be your downfall. And you can set up a corporation and you're, you can be a beneficial owner and you can own something in a different country. That is not illegal. You're allowed to do these things. And then they have a problem because now you are scattered little pockets of wealth in a multitude of places, some of which are in entities that they themselves are using foundations, Hillary Clinton, Clinton Foundation, Tony Blair, Blair Foundation. We are using foundation structures. We are using their weapons to protect us that they are using it. to protect themselves. I love it. You've I got love to it. use I the weapons it. that they use. <laughs> you I can't find it. them with, with a World War I Mauser when they are coming with um, automatic weapons. There's, a, lot of, weapons there's, a, there's a heap of information. We're almost out of time. I've got two questions for you, Market Sniper. First one. The US dollar is on a tear. It is, everyone's talking about it, that the US dollar is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. What's your view going forward? Stronger for longer or about to collapse? Yes, our view is uh, has been bullish dollar for an extended period. Uh, people can check our claims, by the way, because a lot of people now are showing up and going, "Oh, old dollar, dom you know, wrecking ball." We said at an eighty nine level, it was likely to turn here, or our view is wrong. That was on the dollar index. Uh, wrecking ball. We were exceedingly bearish euro. We did the euro USD. We showed a head and shoulders. All these draws are still on my charts since long time ago. I'll start with the euro USD. It's very popular at the moment. So this is one heck of a messy chart, but this is what we do. We work truly on charts. This head and shoulder we called up top here. This is still a risk reward. I haven't brought it down 
for how rewarding this trade has been to where we are currently. That was a, a complex head and shoulder. This is the kind of technical analysis uh, we do. You've got an M top. Uh, this, so I'll just show you what a uh, little bit of what's in here. I might even just take all the lines off. It's a bit daunting for people for the first time if they're not technical to see so much uh, uh, jaws. But essentially left shoulder here, and then you get a complex head and shoulder. We teach this in our program materials. It's an M top, and then you got a, the small right shoulder. When you get complexity in the head, like that dent in the middle, the M, um, you tend to get smaller shoulders. That's your right shoulder. This was our first call at 117 to buy a short, the euro. At the same time, we were doing the exact same on the Dixie, which is like an inverted euro. The euro is 52% of the Dixie, but there's also the yen in there. We were also calling long the USD JPY. So we saw this dollar strength long, long time ago. And it's also why we started warning crypto that macro was going to be against them because Bitcoin was super strong up to 16,000 from 10,000 whilst the dollar was being killed. They, yeah. The crypto kids think it's all about crypto. They don't realize it's a currency pair. It's Bitcoin USD. And you are trading against a pair. That means you are short the dollar at the same time. So many things people were not seeing because they're not macro minded and not macro technical. My biggest disappointment is to realize how few people actually look at the big macro time charts. We're not the best macro technical analysts. We're the only macro technical analysts. We okay. called the end of the debt cycle because there was a major spill in yield that you've never seen before. Cycles end on final capitulations in the same way the dot com boom ended on uh, final blow. So you've had the euro spill, we're going to have a parity run, and then it's probably going to rally for a bit, putting everyone off the scent in the same way after this head and shoulder run that 110 had a period where it rallied over here. But in the long run, the euro is in deep, deep trouble. And similarly, uh, the yen. Uh, as we've highlighted. These are major currencies. You don't have high cost of holding if you are going long um, the dollar against the euro. It's not like trading the Turkish lira where you the purchase, you know, the interest rates are massively different and just holding the trade open has a high burn on you. Um, and these, these, so FX emerging is in deep trouble. Bless the South African Rand. They're going to have a bit of problem. The only thing that helps them is that they drag a bit of gold out the ground and platinum. Um, and Australia has the inflation trade on their side. So there's still some inflation while we're getting the contraction. So the commodities are stubbornly firm, even though they're selling off a little bit now, they've done very yeah. well. So you're gonna do better as an Australian than you would do as a European right now. But that doesn't mean you're doing brilliantly and, you're, and your currency is failing still against gold. And to, for people that say, but gold's doing so bad, it's contracting right now. That's your great gift, the paper price of metals. If you have a look at gold versus the yen, which I'll happily pull up, yen, one of the worst performing currencies, by the way, um, you will see the huge value that it has delivered. Uh, take those jaws off in terms of protecting buy buying power. Again, we're on a weekly chart. How can you be upset with a move uh, from around, is that yen? Yeah, gold yeah. yen. Uh, you're at about 12, uh, 128,000 yen in 20, 20th of August, 2018, 128, you had 237,000 uh, today. That is decent. Now imagine the scale of the perversion that is holding up a disproportionately oversupplied debt market has, is the scale that the gold is being suppressed because there's balance. The move you will get is crypto-esque. People will be wow. shocked. It's not impossible to get 100,000 ounce gold uh, 80,000 ounce gold uh, in this unwinding. But I don't think you get to trade it. It will be in a Bretton Woods system, much as Roosevelt just re-rated it to 35 from 20 and handed everybody a big loss. Right. Um, so it's only if you physically hold it that you will not get cheated out of it. Hold the gold long and the paper price can be, a they'll just stop trading for six months. There'll be problem reaction solution, a little bit of rioting, a little bit of screaming. Then they'll go and have lots of meetings. And then the IMF will meet and say, we've been working hard. Here's your new system. Here's how you go. Oh, by the way, this is now valued. This we decided to put it in a basket. Gold is worth 100,000. These nations have the X amount. Da, 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 da. It's been audited. And boom, there it is. But that could take decades to play out. They could, they could, they no, could the system's longer. too, uh, the system is in the final. So in terms of my timing for this, and I haven't said this at all often, the, the remainder of this year, and I would imagine the first half of next year. So in less than a year, you will have seen 
wholesale events that will have you uh, seeing that this is probably well in event of occurring. So if we speak again July next year, you'll say, wow, what a lot has happened since we last spoke, uh, Francis, and quite a few of the shoes you mentioned have dropped, not necessarily all of them, but we will have had, I expect, some food and supply chain rioting in many nations that have never had it before. We will have seen some grid down situations in nations that have never had it before. As a South African, I'm far more prepped for and capable of seeing things that nobody thought would come. ESCOM exported electricity to most of Southern Africa, I can tell you. No one ever thought South Africa wouldn't be actually having up to six hours of grid down um, uh, in, in their own domestic market. We were running the best electric uh, system in Africa by a mile and a half. Um, yeah. Things people never saw. You know, where I would, you know, people were saying Rhodesia would never fall in South Africa uh, only for to be under an ANC government today. So things people can't visualize. This is an exercise in imagination because there are decades where, you know, very little happens in, you know, days where decades happen. And we are going to go into that hyper uh, event uh, realm. And it is an opportunity. The game is mental health, staying calm, staying focused, looking through the smog. And those that can do that will come out disproportionately better off. So I'm not over-focusing on the dystopia. I don't want to bum people out. Some will be. The fact of the matter is be smart, take action, follow your channel, which is sniffing in the right places with the gold and silver. But beware, equities, asset classes, contractionary phase. That is the hyperstagflation. Okay. There's actually an asset contraction, but there's stubborn price inflation. So your cost of living is being squeezed out. This is the reverse Goldilocks. Your cost of living is getting more expensive and your assets are going down. Reverse wealth effect at a time that it's harder and the cost of living. It's not pleasant. However, hold the right things for the transfer in the system. You will survive that. Do not be put in a position where you're a forced seller. Surrender debt. We could have a spike in interest rates. It's one of the ways you throw everybody out of their assets and it allows the one with the money to accumulate it all. And that all right. is part of the game. So um, what, do you're not saying, what you're saying, what you're suggesting, and I then want to, because we've run out of time, uh, Market Sniper, you're suggesting that people should have uh, some of their wealth in, in cash, some of it in precious metals, possibly some of the commodities would be okay as well, uh, <clears throat> but that you think that some of these hard assets will pull back a bit, but they can find out, a heck of a lot more. Just tell them very quickly, our audience, how they can follow you uh, on Twitter, but also how they can get involved in the market, sniper.com. Uh, the last word is up to you uh, to let people know how they can follow you. Kerry, first of all, thank you very much for having me on. We've got a bunch of conversations I'd love to deep in dive. Please yeah, ask me again. Yeah, I think again. we've got to do it again. <laughs> um, to your lovely Australian audience, gentlemen, uh, thank you for already supporting our um, themarketsniper.com very well. We have a, a swathe of Australians already on board. Uh, there are many of you that are thinking the right thoughts. Uh, you go to themarketsniper.com and you book a call. Uh, you'll have a friendly, non-pressure uh, demo of our site, what we do, uh, a little of what we buy. My main message is the financial advice of 60, 40 portfolios and bonds and equity was a uh, good for a cycle. That cycle has ended. Most of uh, equity bond portfolios are contracting at the record rates not seen since 1800s at the moment. It's the worst year. You need end of cycle financial advice for end of cycle season. You can't go in your shorts and flip-flops into the Arctic. We've been in a summer and the sudden winter is coming. If you are prepared, you come out of this so much stronger. Wealth, wealth is a relative thing. You can be a leader amongst your peers. It's an opportunity to stand up and be smart and have the vision through the smog. We facilitate that through our community through our contacts that we put together for building wealth in reset season. It is our distinct impression that this is the great reset season and that events you will see are unparalleled for your personal frame of life existence. But if you look at great world wars and many more, it is predictable and has happened before. You can come out this a whole bunch better. If that sounds relevant to you, you'll enjoy our community on themarketsniper.com. You can follow my YouTube channel for technical analysis on traditional markets, the market sniper. If you're crypto orientated, the crypto sniper. I have a reset sniper. It's on Odyssey because I say nasty things YouTube doesn't like. Uh, so you can have a look there. You may have to uh, buy some 
some library tokens uh, to do that. Thank you so much for having me on. To everyone, it's an opportunity. We have to do an obstacle course. You can work as a team and you can get through it and get satisfaction, or you can be, dis you can be de uh, decentralized, non-cooperative and have a horrible, horrible reset. You can decide taking action, preparing, is mental health and strength for testing times, and you'll come out a leader on the other side. Thank you for having me on. Francis Hunt, also known as the market sniper, the only macro technical analyst <laughs> globally. And what he said was, you've got to build wealth. This is a real reset. And uh, he likes gold and silver. What's not to like about that, ladies and gentlemen? Be careful out there. Stay safe. This is not financial advice. Do your own research. And Absolutely. as Francis said, Book yourself a call if you're interested in his thoughts and getting involved in the community. For now, thanks for joining me at Small Caps today.